Um, well, I don't know. Where do you start with all this stuff? I mean, uh, this was sort of incredible. Um, you know, we we had a week in which uh, the the I, I, I think everything. Oh, the best way to put it is, is, is I know we said things similar to this, but I think in a major way the dam broke this week. Um, uh, I think that uh, there's two sides to almost everything except for Nazis. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think um, that's right. I mean, I think this is um, this is. Uh, uh, and yet, I mean, we're seeing some people, right? Like uh, South Carolina Senator uh, Tim Scott said that uh, yep. Donald Trump has lost his moral authority. Um, and uh, Bob Corker said, like, you know, I question this guy's uh, ability to be president at this point, um, which is you know, maybe in some respects a little bit more surprising than um, yeah. than Tim Scott, uh, frankly. Um, right. And Even though Tim Scott's African American, he is from South Carolina, and uh, Corker's been more moderate in terms of voting record and more. Um, but you know, and then he's at war with Jeff Flake now, and that's been a long time coming. But Flake has gotten more critical this week since this happened. I think, you know, obviously McCain, you know, after the health care vote, but it, those, those things were slowly happening here and there. Um, to me, losing these business, these, these silly business councils and things that weren't really doing anything, as manufacturing council and everything, the fact that a number of corporate CEOs stood up publicly and said, I don't want to be associated with you. The fact that a number of charitable, major charitable entities pulled away, pulled their events from Mar-a-Lago and said, I don't want to be associated with you anymore. Um, those are almost even bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and uh, because these are people that donate and give money to the Republican Party, and there's more that happens. And then I would say even, you know, people... And they, and they have more to lose. In the main and let's be honest. Like, I mean, on some level, for those business, uh, um, uh, those CEOs, they are afraid of retribution. Uh, that, you know, and it's clear. Look, we know the Trump uh, administration made a deal with Sinclair Media, and this is a little bit tangential, but it, it expresses the dynamic. We know they made a deal with Sinclair Media during the campaign to get better coverage, and then we know that uh, basically on the day that Donald Trump was uh, elected, Sinclair was virtually guaranteed with the ability to expand uh, through a really dubious loophole uh, their, their uh, media concentration, their ownership of stations across the country. That dynamic can go the other way, too. Right, where sure can look yeah. what he's been doing, you know, attacking Amazon constantly because of uh, the Washington Post and and the ownership of uh, of Washington Post by Jeff Bezos, right? So that's I mean, broken he, clock he, is right he, twice a day, but n nevertheless, yes, your point stands. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. but the point being, he, he, yeah, it's not the reasons that uh, he's not going after them for reasons that you would criticize them or right. I might. Um, so. You know, he can, and he'll use that bully pulpit. He went after the CEO of Merck, which I'm sure is shocking. The only African-American CEO hmm, who had been on his council. Um, but you see it there. You see some people who even have referred to themselves in the past as supporters have now finally broken away and aren't. You see it in their members of, uh, you know, the, the where we are in the cult of both sides in mainstream media. And I've seen people I've never seen take, you know, literally be willing to take a side uh, who have come out and just sort of said, well, I guess, you know, the president's proven himself to have sympathies with Nazis. People that would never, you know, Larry Sabato said something like that, you know, University of Virginia, one of the election handicappers. He's just one that comes to mind. There's plenty of others who people who usually don't engage in that kind of language to criticize either party. And again, it shouldn't take that much. Uh, it, it, you know, I wish we had a media that could be much more honest. I wish a lot of things. But again, one of the things that there really is no debate about, there's no debate about, about Nazis. There's no debate about slavery. They'd like to. I think they've tried to. It seems Tucker Carlson kind of tried to have a debate in his show the other night. Yes. About it. <laughs> but that's old Tucker. Um, I, I just think that, you know, you've crossed, you really crossed a pretty bright line. And uh, I think so. I think it's it's again. It's not to say he's going to be gone anytime soon. Um, we have to remember who it is we're dealing with, and and people need to remember how slow the system works. Um, you know, a lot of that may be determined by Mueller eventually, anyhow. But I think he's kind of 
I think he's done in terms of being able to get anything done legislatively, which was already well, a pretty big challenge. Yeah, but I don't I mean, that doesn't mean that the Republicans are done in that respect. And, you know, one of the things uh, it was interesting what happened yesterday in terms of the way that the Democrats were dealing with this uh, from yesterday and to today, I should say. Um, you had Nancy Pelosi yesterday yesterday talking about the confederate statues in the halls of congress have always been reprehensible if republicans are serious about rejecting white supremacy i call upon speaker ryan to join democrats to remove confederate statues from the capitol immediately now schumer came out yesterday morning early and supported a measure by cory booker to do the same and made it all about that but he has since written another statement that, and I don't know if this is a written one or just a, an interview, which I think gets back on point. Because the problem with Nancy Pelosi, putting the pressure on Paul Ryan and making it about c- Confederate statues is a second order issue. The first order issue, in my mind, is Chuck Schumer coming out and saying uh, that Trump and Bannon were trying to divert attention away from the president's refusal to unequivocally and full-throatedly denounce white supremacy, neo-Nazism, and other forms of bigotry. That's what he should be focusing on in terms of Schumer. That's where the focus should 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 begin. And, you know, the Confederate statues, I feel like, are a second-order issue that will take care sure. of themselves. But from a political standpoint... It actually mostly is taking care of itself. Yes. There's numerous... As Baltimore removes them overnight, as Lexington says they're taking them down. Maryland like State House like, last night, I, I think at like twelve oh five a.m. they uh, they t- they took out uh, a statue from their state house. And here's there's Schumer a Township here in Ohio that like I don't even know where the hell it is uh, outside of Cincinnati by about probably a half hour to an hour, where apparently there's a Confederate marker on the road because I guess some former Confederates settled there, and uh, you know their town. Uh, whatever it is, city managers, like, all right, we're removing it in a way that would have never happened before. No, and that's so great. That's, uh, is taking care of itself. That's great. But uh, yeah. Schumer goes on to say, while it's critical we work towards the goal of uh, Cory Booker's legislation, we must continue to denounce and resist President Trump for his reprehensible actions. In fact, I would go even further and say, we must insist that Paul Ryan renounce the president. That, that, that Mitch McConnell renounced the president specifically, and they should be leveraging every single Republican congressperson to do this. Now, now yeah. I, and, and, and look, this is— um, Well, it's simple. I mean, you know, we always say—excuse <clears throat> me. We always say to, 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 to members of Congress and others, you know, do you renounce hate speech? Do you renounce a certain uh, figure for being a white supremacist? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well— why is it any different when it's the president? He has said that, you know, they're good people on both sides. So clearly that's what he thinks. Renounce him. It's simple. And, 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 and I'll tell you who, um, you know, it, it, who gets it, oddly enough. I mean, this guy, Tim Miller, who was the co-founder of American Rising, he tweeted out yesterday when Pelosi made her call for removal of Confederate statues from the Capitol. Like, look, this is a, 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 a just a strategic and tactical error on behalf of Pelosi because you do not give the media or the Republicans the opportunity to shift the focus. And he writes, uh, this guy, Tim Miller, a very democratic move to go all in on a 30 percent issue statues. And the polling supposedly is in favor is is against the idea of removing them. I, I think it has more to do with the questions. But nevertheless, that's not even the po- that, that's not even the point. It's a second order question. When Trump put a 75 to 80 percent issue, very fine people on a platter for them. In other words, no, the, I mean, that's right. And and maybe I don't know, maybe <clears throat> Chuck Schumer uh, saw that uh, that tweet and uh, sort of uh, 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 pulled it back. Um, And made it a little bit less about Cory Booker's legislation, which, again, you know, sort of a classic Democratic, uh, you know, I mean, this is just like this is just poor politics. It's just poor politics. Right. It's like trying to, um, you know, make make the the issue even more intricate when it it doesn't need to be. And and also in most of these places, again, you know, if you, these are actually 
end up being state and local issues and let them, you know, I mean, do I want federally, do I want every one of these statues removed? Of course, but especially when it's happening anyhow. And, and again, this can be handled at various levels. My whole view of it is yes. Keep the pressure on, on Trump for the fact that he's proven himself a white supremacist, you know, keep the pressure on right, for that. Because if you force Mueller announces something, if you uh, on the force fact, I mean, go, Paul yeah. Ryan, to you, if you keep pressuring Paul Ryan to say that, then Paul Ryan himself will say, "Well, actually, I'm for getting rid of the Confederate statue in uh, in federal right. buildings because he will he will have to find something, and that That's will right. go by the wayside. You still will have another ask of him, and this is just simple political no, you, dynamics. You, we do it all the time. We ask people to renounce white supremacists just because this one happens to be in the White House shouldn't make it any different." Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.